since Mr. Fragulis is here, I'll yield the floor to him. Good afternoon, everyone. I should like to welcome you to the last table of this very important event. Not less important table than the other ones, just because it is last. It is a tremendous honor for me to moderate this table. That pertains to primary health care. Primary health care is the, well, Achilles heel of the Greek healthcare system, and it is an innate uh, weakness. And there are, as of late, uh, intense efforts to improve it, which are hindered, they are subversed by established interests that clash and conflict and oppose a reform. This may be the first time that we're closer than ever with this reform to having the country acquire an organized primary health care system. How much we missed primary health care was evident during the pandemic when we had to deal with this crisis without the first line of defense in our health system, which I believe gave the impetus, the incentive to the government to accelerate their efforts and to redouble their efforts in that direction. I should like now to start with the Secretary General for Primary Health Care with the Ministry of Health, Mr. Marius Themistocleus, who is the architect of this reform. And I hope that in the years to come, he will be mentioned in history books as the person who established primary health care in Greece. Good afternoon. Well, I can speak off the cuff without my slides, but if you have them, show them. Now, in Greece, in order to make a reform happen, you need to um, explain three things. Why you want to change things, where you want to go, and primarily, the third thing is where we're lacking in Greece, how you want to get there. The why we need to change some things, I'll give you two examples. In Greece, it's something we have resolved. We know very well, most of us, what the problems are. And in a very eloquent way, we can describe them by saying, saying we, have, we don't have this, we don't have that, and so on and so forth. Where we want to go is something we also know, generally speaking, and abstractly. We say that we want a better healthcare system, we want better health, we want better primary healthcare without anyone going into the details, which is necessary so as to know where you're headed. What we're lacking is how we want to get there. Uh, if we have resolved the how and the, the what and the where, it's the how and to execute and to do things on the field. In Greece, in primary health care, and to say things more clearly, we have agreed as to where we want to go where we headed. And this is the personal doctor. It's not because we called it that or someone calls it family doctor or um, primary healthcare doctor. This has been a point of agreement in the country and over the past 10 years it has been uh, legislated on. It was uh, instituted by the government of new democracy. There was an attempt in 2018 when the bill was passed and in, in society and at the political level and in public discourse, everyone agrees that this is the solution to put things into perspective. And the solution is personal doctor. Well, okay, I can accept asterisks or uh, disagreements that I don't like the name or I don't like the color or anything, but it, it's fine because in public discourse and in public debate, when we see this unfold, apart from whining and uh, disagreements or asterisks, no one disagrees with the institution of the personal doctor per se. And this is very important as a starting point. My next two slides, we'll talk later about the difficulties. My next two slides, Talk about why we don't have organized primary health care in our country and why we need to change it. There's many things we need to say. The key is these two slides. The first one has to do with why we don't have equitable and um, 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 
universal access. We have people who pay out of pocket and we have a large percentage of the population who do not have this access. For many things, they don't have uh, a treating physician. Second, we are lacking in all others and things that are uh, above and beyond traditional diagnosis and treatments in implementing um, prevention programs. The simplest thing being vaccination. We hit all the percentages and uh, everything said that it's the doctor who will give the appropriate um, um, advice and it's who the citizens trust. We didn't have the operational arm as the state to reach those citizens. I wouldn't want to spend too much time on this slide because I will move on to much more practical issues the way you're used to uh, with the Ministry of Health over the past few years, that we will make the universal and equitable access, we will try to resolve things that Mr. Leonis will talk about and will analyze these things as an uh, academician, uh, as a university professor, much better than I do as to where this uh, change should be headed. And we come up with the, pri the personal doctor. To put it in layman's terms, it needs three things. First of all, we will not disturb the relationship between the citizens and their doctors at the moment. There is a well-established mentality. In our country, people have learned to trust their doctors, be they GPs, <coughs> be they family doctors or specialty doctors, on the basis of the chronic ailment they suffer from. You can't from... <coughs> You can't say from one day to the other to say that we'll become England with a GP or Sweden or another country. So the most important thing is that we will not disturb the relationship of the citizens with their doctors. We're building a free extra thing, supply. And it's up to us to win the bet, to win the wager and convince the citizens to use this thing. This needs to escape traditional diagnosis and treatment. The previous two slides. We need to move into prevention to explain to a 60-year-old woman that it is very important to have an annual mammogram and to go to 100% of the population so as to increase uh, the amount to 80% rather than 30% of the over 60 women who do a mammogram every year. To explain them about um, health uh, education, to explain a young person that they need to quit smoking, to adopt a healthy life, what obesity is all about. They may not understand what it is when they're 35, they will do realize it when they're 65 or 70. And at a subsequent stage, because we need to take steps to be able to lead them to a system. How many of you have a people you know who managed to find a surgeon to um, 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 receive surgery for cancer and then not know where they need to go for the next step if they need chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So the GP will take the role of the um, um, guidance um, uh, or the instructor or the guide through the system. This is what I've already mentioned and it's what we'll be implementing shortly. And as I said in the beginning, we didn't come and destroy what was built by the previous governments thus far or to invent the reinvent the wheel or to create something anew without taking into advisement what has already happened in the country and we took things convert um, in, in, in reverse order and see why the things that were in place did not work we can all agree that it didn't work because doctors remunerations were very low they were so low that they wouldn't attract but a very low number of doctors. Those that did attract uh, the doctors, no one uh, implemented the family doctor institution or the principal. Now, uh, we can agree that we can see the increase. The increase is threefold, um, three times as much money as uh, was given earlier. Here we can see citizens per age bracket. We have different amounts, uh, the capitation, how much each citizen costs at an average to the state and to the doctor respectively. A 70-year-old citizen is a higher uh, bracket, but at an average we have this. And what does this mean? In order to be able to talk and to reach a realistic scenario and to be able to look the doctors in the eye is that a doctor, even if we subtract uh, operational expenses, secretariat, uh, utility bills, they can uh, receive something between 1900 and 2400 euros. Now, we cover their utilities, we cover their rent, and if they want to carry on 
uh, their private practice um, uh, beyond these office hours, they're free to do so. So we offer remunerations that are not offending them. They offer a basis for discussion and we can go out and do things. And this was the first thing that we changed in our design. Second is we have a list which provides an answer to public debate that says we have 2,000 patients. No, we have 2,000 citizens. A 23-year-old will need to visit their personal doctor once or never. When I was in England, until the age of 35, I never even registered with a GP. I did do register with them when I had to receive a vaccination. Let's see, where is Europe? That's the average. There are countries with high numbers, there are countries with low numbers. And whenever you try to touch that number, because in the public debate we need to start talking with numbers and uh, technocratically, whenever you increase something, you reduce you, the number of doctors, and what you don't need, you reduce it. In the country where our biggest problem is that we don't have doctors, we cannot reduce the number. Those who say, well, reduce it down to 1,500 because this is proper care, the answer is yes, but the enemy of what is good is what's better. So if we don't want this to ever achieve, is let's do that 1,300 say we don't have doctors. We can't move forward. The other thing is consultations. It's... Um, private practice calls and the secret comes from vaccination. Why was vaccination successful? Vaccination was successful because it was planned on a carte blanche. It was, we started from scratch. And the mentality that we, and we say this in total humility, we determine the appointments. We control the work that is being done on the field. We say that the health center needs to open at 8 o'clock and at 10 past 8. If the appointment is not there, it turns red and I can see it. So in order not to destroy the system, with the 200 consultations with the specialists, that uh, happens with the prescriptions and everything, we still have the appointments. The doctors upload the appointments and the citizens make those appointments electronically. You can't hack the system or violate the system. You can't declare people who um, do not correspond to actual people. I mean, you, people receive their text and uh, the appointment is done. It's not a user-friendly system. It's not a vaccination. We can't adapt the systems very fast, but it will become. We already have the big change on October the 10th, and over the next two months, we will make it exactly like the vaccination appointments with uh, entering the social security number and seeing in green the empty slots. Um, appointment time. Uh, debate says 15 minutes ain't enough. Well, if it's not enough, my answer is how much do you want it to be? I mean, we can't have allocate an hour, an hour and a half per appointment because this is another trick. You go out and you tell citizens and society that the appointments we can afford are very, very few. No, the appointments are on the basis of what happens to other countries. We see that even with this design, we are in the upper tier. We are in the countries um, that are those that have 19 or 21 minutes. So we're not that much or that far away. So if the system is successful and more doctors um, 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 participate, we can increase the time. We want to balance the numbers and to see this uh, su succeed, we need to define this. It's a 15-minute appointment and 30 minutes for the first appointment, which requires the filling in of the um, electronic health record. How many people before us said that they wanted to have an electronic health record? Whether it will suffice or not, we have 4.5 thousand entries, even if we have uh, twice as many, we'll have 2 million filled in patient health records. It's been a debate for the past six years. In six months, even if we have 30% go there, we'll have 1.5 million complete patient e-patient records. Third criticism, impersonal doctors. We register with a doctor whom we don't know. Now, if you can design this and correlate 8 million citizens with approximately 6,000 doctors and make them know or have a casting session, I will put my hands in the air and I will implement whatever you bring me. This is the way you make a um, healthcare system. The first time around, it is impersonal. And in this country, we need to um, um, accept that we, we can't do, we can't control this. We can't control everything. It's up to the citizen to control. The citizen may change their personal doctor, especially in the first six months, they will be able to make as many changes as they want. And if the doctor asks for money tomorrow, 
brown envelope and if they're not happy they can move to another doctor they can make a complaint I will say what I need to say there will be a complaints mechanism we can complain the doctor and we can um, um, uh, send the doctor to um, 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 uh, the court and well the citizen will simply move to another doctor number four is unlimited number of consultations it says well uh, criticism says why isn't there a limit everyone will come to our private practice and we will not be able uh, to um, serve everyone first of all it doesn't have to do with the doctors if a patient is with a doctor with a very late time they will move if we have many citizens to many doctors with long appointments it's up to us to resolve it the reason we're stuck to that and we're not doing it because other healthcare systems do that I mean they say if you're over 70 you have eight consultations if you're 50 you have five consultations examples from other countries if we do this, we'll run out of consultations in the first month. And it's the sixth consultation, now you need to pay me. So we have failed as a system. We need to speak in clear terms with the society, with the healthcare professionals, if we want this to work. Why did the other specialties join uh, the invitation? Now, this is uncharted waters. I don't know whether it will yield fruit. This is part of a design, okay? We have plan B and plan C from the onset, and plan D even, depending on each step and where we are, what we will implement each time. We don't know how this step will go, how it will work. It's something used by other countries when they don't have enough doctors and they call uh, internists. There will be job on the training. These are doctors we can use. It is wealth we can use. It's doctors of specialties who are very specialized. Professor Mr. Leonis will say what job on the training means in due course and how we can put it to good use. I'm saying this clearly. There's a question mark there whether we will have the number of doctors we want or not. What have we done thus far? And thus far means we started designing it, but it's, it's just six months of implementation. And six months, and I'm speaking very humbly when I say as compared to what was done in the country beforehand. We have 4.4 million citizens. Registrations are due to three reasons. Why? Because as I said, it's what I'm asking um, the society to do it's we did this with the vaccination trust us we'll do it here and so it works what works is pharmacies 60 percent of greek citizens made an appointment with pharmacies especially the elderly who are not very um, tech savvy pharmacies opened up and they made 160,000 registrations per day these are the numbers we need to realize what is the operational capability we have and we can do and will do it the second, it's the biggest proof, be that um, uh, the fine of uh, transportation or the pharmacies, people want it, people want this institution. We have 4.5 million people registered now. Atiki does not have doctors and we still receive 30 to 40,000 um, applications from um, the countryside. The numbers are devastating, it's, uh, they're, they're staggering rather. The first stage is to write things down, and the second, which may run in parallel with the first, is for this thing to work. Okay, in, in the past, to an extent, people registered. It'll have to work. I know that I uh, never meet my time allotted in when I talk, but there are things that you've never heard before. These are things with uh, registered, um, Athens in registration. We stopped in Attiki, we don't have any slots. It's 45 people, 45% 45 of people registered. We have areas in the country um, where we have exceeded 65 to 70%. Imagine in a city that this never existed, 70% of people now having been registered with a personal doctor with the problems that are there. The time schedule, how will come, some physicians are not prepared, some of them have entered the system because they do not have not believe that we are able to audit them. This is our daily routine. This is what we have to deal with. Here you see how many have enrolled in the public structures and how many in free professionals. The system, as time goes by and the more uh, physicians will enter, will come in a balance. And the success of the system and our uh, luck will be when we have more uh, 
physicians in the system to have an assessment and the citizen to be able to choose who are the best and most suitable for his needs. I will not dwell on that. The ways. I'll conclude with this picture and I will address the questions. It's nice to say we embarked upon, we have managed to cut the ice and to reach the point. The biggest risk in this uh, effort, because I told you in the public dialogue, if there's any other proposal, I challenge you to give it to me, because increasing money and other interventions is not an other proposal. This is discussed. We have discussed with professionals, with uh, physicians who have implemented eight out of ten. The situation should be win-win. So what I say is that we did it with the vaccination. Trust us. Place your trust in us so with whatever the difficulty, and the first difficulty already appears, whatever emerges, this thing will be applied. It will be implemented. There is no other way. I may not be in this position tomorrow, but there's no other way. This is the only way we can move ahead, unless we say we want to remain as we are because this is our comfort zone. And the biggest risk is that no one wants to leave the comfort zone, no matter how much we complain and say that there is no primary care. And let us not forget, better is always the enemy of good. Thank you. We thank the Secretary General for this presentation. We hope that the ship reaches the destination and let us now see the message uh, sent by João Breda, who is head of the WHO office in Greece. The World Health Organization has been an ally, a consultant of the Greek state throughout uh, this uh, 10 uh, year period that we try to transform primary care. Καλησπέρα. Ευχαριστώ πολύ για την πρόσκληση. Πολύ μεγάλη ευχαριστή που είμαστε σήμερα, έστω και εξ αποστάσεως. Λυπάμαι που δεν μπορώ να είμαι εκεί στην Αθήνα με φυσική παρουσία. Ελπίζω να τα καταφέρω την επόμενη φορά. Κατά τη διάρκεια της σύντομης ομιλίας μου θα ήθελα να μοιραστώ μαζί σας κάποιες από τις πρόσφατες εξελίξεις στο πεδίο της πρωτοβάθμιας φροντίδας και της εργασίας που γίνεται εδώ και ένα χρόνο από το νέο αυτό σημαντικό γραφείο του ΠΟΗ που πρόσφατα ιδρύθηκε στη χώρα σας και δει στην Αθήνα με τη μεγάλη υποστήριξη βέβαια της ελληνικής κυβέρνησης. Το γραφείο αυτό είναι ήδη πολύ σημαντικό. Η ύπαρξη αυτού του γραφείου είναι σημαντικό σταθμός για την οργάνωση των ε, συστημάτων υγείας και βελτίωσης την ποιότητα ζωής των Ευρωπαίων πολιτών. Με την υποστήριξη της Ελλάδος επεκτηνόμαστε και διευρύνουμε την υποστήριξή μας για πάρα πολλές άλλες χώρες της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης στη συγγνώμη της Νοτιοανατολικής Ευρώπης και μοιραζόμαστε ένα μεγάλο, που μοιράζονται ένα μεγάλο μεριοδό του ευρωπαϊκού πληθυσμού. Είναι καταπληκτικό λοιπόν και πολλέ ευχαριστήσεις στην Ελλάδα και την ελληνική κυβέρνηση για την υποστήριξή τους στον ΠΟΗ και το καινούργιο γραφείο το οποίο ίδρυσε η κυρία Χάντς Κλώτιε και στέλνει τους χαιρετισμούς. Επειδή η ποιότητα της φροντίδας είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντική σε όλα τα συστήματα υγείας είναι αποφασιστική σημασία να επιτύχουμε και να εφαρμόσουμε τα πρότυπα δεν υπάρχει σωστή περίθαλψη χωρίς ποιότητα. Ως εκ τούτου, η Ευρωπαϊκή Περιφέρεια στον ΠΟΗ ηγείται της πορείας έχοντας καθιδρύσει αυτό το μοναδικό και πολύ σημαντικό hub, κόμβο στα θέματα ποιότητας υγείας που έχει δράσει στην Ελλάδα. Και όπως σας είπα αποτελεί και το κέντρο και επηρεάζει πάρα πολλές χώρες την περιοχή και στην περιβρύτερη περιφέρεια και έχει ήδη πολύ μεγάλο αντίκτυπο και στον ελληνικό πληθυσμό και το ελληνικό ε, σύστημα υγείας. Είμαστε ταυτόχρονα λοιπόν και ευγνώμονες και περήφανοι που μας δίνεται η ευκαιρία να συνεργαστούμε με τόσους σημαντικούς εμπλεκόμενους στη χώρα σας. Έχω λίγες διαφάνειες που θα συνοδεύσουν την ομιλία μου 
και απεικονίζουν κάποια βασικά σημεία της εργασίας μας. Αν μου επιτρέπετε να μοιραστώ την οθόνη μου μαζί σας, για να μοιραστούμε λίγο το τι συμβαίνει και το τι έχουμε κάνει κατά τους τελευταίους μήνες. Τους τελευταίους 18 μήνες ήδη πέρασε. Για εμάς λοιπόν, όπως είπα, είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντική η ποιότητα της περίθαλψης, γιατί είναι στον πυρήνα του Ευρωπαϊκού Προγράμματος Εργασίας. Το Ευρωπαϊκό Πρόγραμμα Εργασίας του ΠΟΗ είναι η Ναυαρχίδα με τρεις μεγάλες προτεραιότητες. Είναι η πρωτοβάθμια φροντίδα που νομίζω ότι είναι και από τα θέματα της συζήτηση σήμερα στο συνεδριό σα. Και επομένως η ποιότητα είναι πάντα στον πυρήνα όλων των προτεραιοτήτων προστασίας του πληθυσμού από τον αρτικό αντίκτυπο σε περίπτωση κατεπηγόντων και η προαγωγή της υγείας και της ευημερία. Ο πρόπος λοιπόν που βλέπουμε την ποιότητα είναι πραγματικά με ένα συνεκτικό ολοκληρωμένο τρόπο προς τη μακροπρόθεσμα πρωτοβάθμια στην διαβίου περίθαλψη και τα πάντα πρέπει να ενσωματώσουν και να συμπεριλάβουν στοιχεία ποιότητας. Πολύ σημαντικό για μας να κατανοήσουμε ότι δυστυχώς δεν ήταν προνομιούχες ομάδες των πληθυσμό που παίρνουν ποιοτικέ υπηρεσίες. Το αντίθετο, οι πιο ευάλωτε παίρνουν και τις χειρότερες δυνατές υπηρεσίες που δίνει το σύστημα υγείας. Κανονικά λοιπόν, ήδη πάρα πολύ το είπαν και το είδαμε και στην έκθεση της τελευταία της Επιτροπής αλλά και στον ΠΟΗ και στην κοινή έκθεση που έγινε από τον ΩΣΑ αυτό συμβαίνει σε όλες τις χώρες. Οι πιο φτωχοί παίρνουν τις χαμηλότερες ποιότητας υπηρεσίες υγείας. Στο γραφείο μας λοιπόν θέλουμε να υπερπηδούσουμε αυτό το πολύ σημαντικό εμπόδιο και να διασφαλίσουμε ότι δεν θα αφήσουμε κανένα πίσω. Είναι ένας από τους κύριους, ε, το κύριο μότο στο Ευρωπαϊκό Πρόγραμμα Εργασίας. Πολιτικές δηλαδή δημόσιας υγείας για την Ευρωπαϊκή Περιφέρεια. Αυθυνόμενοι και καλύπτοντας τις ανάγκες των πλέον ευάλωτων. Είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό. Να σκεφτούμε τι δείχνουν οι μαρτυρίες. Δείχνουν ότι πρέπει να γίνει πολύ περισσότερα σε ό,τι αφορά την ποιότητα για τους πιο ευάλωτες ομάδες. Πρέπει λοιπόν να προάγουμε περισσότερο την ποιότητα για τους ευέλικτους, για τους φτωχούς. Προφανώς... Ο ΠΟΗ εργάζεται πάνω στα θέματα ποιότητας στον τομέα δημόσιας υγείας και πάρα πολλά χρόνια. Πιθανότατα σε αυτή την περιφέρεια βέβαια υπάρχει μεγαλύτερη καινοτομία σε σχέση με προηγούμενες δεκαετίες. Ίσως να έχουμε φτάσει αν θέλετε και σε ένα πλατό τώρα και τελευταία με τη δημιουργία του γραφείου αυτού στο γραφείο. Στην Ελλάδα περιμένουμε να ανακτήσουμε την ταχύτητα και το χαμένο έδαφος και να είμαστε και πάλι καινοτόμοι να παράσχουμε υποστήριξη σε χώρες που θα ηγηθούν τις προσπάθειες. Θέλουμε να είμαστε πολύ δραστήριοι προχωρώντας με τα θέματα ποιότητα σε όλα τα επίπεδα. Σε όλες τους τομείς και σε όλες τις διαστάσεις. Δομούμε λοιπόν, αυτό θέλω να πω, για να προχωρήσουμε την καλή δουλειά πρέπει να προχωρήσουμε. Το είπα ήδη ότι ανοίξαμε το 2021 το γραφείο μας εδώ. Εργαζόμαστε με πάνω από 10 χώρες παρέχοντας ήδη σχετική υποστήριξη σε θέματα ασφαλείας και ποιότητας στις παρεχόμενες υπηρεσίες υγείας. Δουλεύουμε στα θέματα κοινωνικής κοινοτομίας, διαστάσεις που η κοινοτομία είναι πολύ σημαντική και τα συστήματά μας θα είναι πάρα πολύ, ε, είναι πολύ ανθεκτικά και αντιστεκόμενη στην αλλαγή αλλά περισσότερο από ποτέ χρειαζόμαστε πολύ περισσότερη καινοτομία για να προχωρήσουμε. Στην υποστήριξη λοιπόν της Ελλάδος, όπως είπα, πιστεύουμε ότι είμαστε σε θέση να φέρουμε 
καινοτόμες προσεγγίσεις έχουμε με υψηλού επίπεδου πολιτική υποστήριξη που αξίζει συγχαρητηρίων ξεκινήσαμε εστιάζοντας γενικά στην ποιότητα και φέτος δεν ανοίξαμε μόνο το καινούριο μας γραφείο στην Αθήνα αλλά επεκτείνομαστε στο πεδίο της υγείας για να συμπεριλάβουμε και μια διάσταση της ποιότητας ε, αγωγής πιο συγκεκριμένα για τα παιδιά και τους εφήβους. Η Ελλάδα ήταν πρωταθλητής στο να βάλει και την ψυχική υγεία στο κέντρο της συζήτησης και πάλι είμαστε ευγνώμονες για το ότι μπορέσαμε να επεκτείνουμε με την υποστήριξη της κυβέρνησης όχι μόνο να παγιώσουμε την ποιότητα υγείας εν γέννη στο δημόσιο σύστημα να διασφαλίσουμε επίσης ότι μπορούμε πραγματικά να επεκτείνουμε το πεδίο αυτό και στα θέματα ψυχικής υγείας. Έχουμε πολύ σαφές όραμα για τη δουλειά την οποία επιτελεί το γραφείο μας στα πλαίσια του περιφερειακού γραφείου της για την Ευρώπη. Το γραφείο στην Αθήνα ανήκει στο περιφερειακό γραφείο του ΠΟΗ στην Ευρώπη που έχει την έδρα του όπως ξέρετε στην Κοπεχάγη και όπως ξέρετε εστιάζουμε στο να γίνουμε ηγέτες στην καινοτομία και της ποιότητας παρεχόμενων υπηρεσιών υγείας με δύο κύρια, κύριες παιδεία εστίασης. Πρώτον, εξυπηρέτηση και υποστήριξη χωρών διαφορετικών από δική μας, όπως είπα. Υπάρχουν χώρες δηλαδή που έχουν απαιτήσει περισσότερη τεχνική υποστήριξη, άλλες μπορεί ίσως να θέλουν πιο ανεπτυγμένο διάλογο με τον ΠΟΗ, με τους ειδήμονές του και να έχουν μια κριτική ματιά στο τι κάνουν σε ό,τι αφορά θέματα ποιότητας και το κάνουμε όπως είπα με αρκετές χώρες, με καμιά δεκαριά χώρες. Και πάλι όπως ανέφερα και προηγουμένως και σε παιδεία καινοτομία που καλύπτει πτυχές όπως το ψηφιακό, καινοτομία για ποιότητα, τηλεϊατρική, άλλες πτυχές που συνδέονται με το ψηφιακό περιβάλλον αλλά επίσης και παροχές υγείας επί τη βάση της αξίας, βελτίωση της εμπειρίας του ασθενούς, όλα αυτά είναι πράγματα που πρέπει να ενσωματωθούν όταν μιλάμε για ποιότητα. Υποστηρίζουμε λοιπόν τα κράτη-μέλη με τα εθνικά πλαίσια και στρατηγικέ του. Έχουμε σε ό,τι αφορά την καινοτομία συλλογή πληροφοριών και συνεχίζουμε όσον αφορά την ποιότητα και την ασφάλεια των ασθενών. Δουλεύουμε με χώρε και εμπλεκόμενου σε ανοιχτού διαλόγου και ανάλυση και πραγματικά δομούμε τα δίκτυα. Επτά δίκτυα έχουν δημιουργηθεί ήδη με ευρωπαϊκέ χώρε. Υπάρχει ένα δίκτυο για ποιότητα υγεία στο μέλλον, μια, με σημεία σκητάλης και εστίασης κλπ. Είμαι πολύ περήφανος να λέω ότι έχουμε υποστήριξη στο ανώτατο επίπεδο ε, της ελληνικής πολιτείας με το Υπουργείο Υγείας και το Πρωθυπουργικό Γραφείο. Έγιναν δύο πολύ μεγάλες συναντήσεις κορυφής που έφεραν σε επαφή οι δήμονες και εμπειρευνόμενε στο τομέα της υγείας με ιδιαίτερη αισθήκη στην πνευματική υγεία, εξαιρετικά επιτυχής πρωτοβουλία το 2021 και το 2022 και προετοιμάζουμε αυτή τη στιγμή μια με, μεγάλες και σημαντικές δημοσιεύσεις που θα παρουσιάσουν τα αποτελέσματα αυτών των σημαντικών συναντήσεων κορυφής και θα τα δείτε προς το τέλος του έτους που θα συνοψίσουμε όλα αυτά τα αποτελέσματα προς δημοσίευση. Και στη διαφάνεια αυτή, να σας δώσω μια πολύ ωραία ε, απεικόνιση της συνάντησης εκείνης που έλαβε χώρα στην Αθήνα, κάποιους από τους πιο εξέχοντες, όχι μόνο πολιτικούς ηθήναντες, αλλά και επιστήμονες διεθνούς βελληνικούς, διεθνούς βελληνικούς και επιστήμονες από το τομέα της υγείας και τους τομεί ψυχικής υγείας, πρωτοβάθμιας και δευτεροβάθμιας φροντίδας και ε, ψυχιατρικών καταστημάτων συμμετέσχων. Προχωράμε λοιπόν συμμετέχοντας με τους πρώτους σε ό,τι αφορά τα θέματα της ποιότητας. Προχωρώντας λοιπόν για να υποστηρίξουμε τις χώρες θα συνεχίσουμε να εστιάζουμε σε συστήματα ποιότητας τα ποιοτικά συστήματα που συμπεριλαμβάνουν αυτό το συνεχές σε ό,τι αφορά τα συστήματα υγείας
θα μιλήσουμε επίσης για τα θέματα ενδυνάμωσης, ψηφιακής ενδυνάμωσης των ασθενών, ώστε να διασφαλίσουμε ότι κινούμαστε και προοδεύουμε από τις κλασικές πτυχές ποιότητας. Ξεκινήσαμε με διασφάλιση ποιότητας, κινηθήκαμε προς την βελτίωση, την ασφάλεια του ασθενούς που είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντική ιδιαίτερα με τον COVID, που έπρεπε να γίνουν πολλά όχι μόνο στην Ελλάδα, αλλά και αλλαχού. Στη συνέχεια προχωρήσαμε στην εμπειρία του ασθενούς και στη συνέχεια στην παροχή υπηρεσιών υγείας επί τη βάση αξίας. Δηλαδή έξι συνιστώσεις στην ποιότητα προχωρώντας με καινοτόμο τρόπο που είναι πολύ σημαντικό. Και αυτό κατέστη μόνο δυνατόν γιατί δημιουργήσαμε ακριβώς αυτή τη λειτουργία, αυτό το ήδη εξειδικευμένο γραφείο στην Ελλάδα. Και είμαστε ευγνώμονες για την υποστήριξη της Ελλάδος. Το μέλλον λοιπόν είναι λαμπρό. Προχωράμε στην αντιμετώπιση αυτών των νέων προκλήσεων και να βάζοντας την ποιότητα στο κέντρο των μελημάτων μας. Υπάρχουν τα προβλήματα υπέρτασης, υπερφόρτωσης, στρες από τη δουλειά. Όλα πολλά γίνονται στην, στο πεδίο αυτό. Ξέρουμε ότι η χώρα έχει πολύ μεγάλη πρόκληση να αντιμετωπίσει με πολλά προβλήματα υγείας, όπως για παράδειγμα με την Παχυσαρκία είναι η δεύτερη χώρα με την μεγαλύτερη επιπολασμό παιδικής ε, ε, Παχυσαρκίας. Πολλά πρέπει να γίνουν πάνω σε αυτό. Αλλά βέβαια όλα έχουν να κάνουν με συνεργασία. Θέλουμε να ζητήσουμε πραγματικά για συνεργασία και συνέργεια. Και η καινοτομία που γεννάται από συνδημιουργία στην αντιμετώπιση στοιχείων και ζητημάτων και να αντιμετωπίσουμε ακριβώς το θέμα ότι οι πιο φτωχοί παίρνουν και τις πιο φτωχές υπηρεσίες υγείας και αυτό είναι απαράδεκτο. Πρέπει να το αντιμετωπίσουμε λοιπόν ώστε να προχωρήσουμε σε συστήματα ψηφιακής μέτρησης ποιοτικών συστημάτων ώστε να μπορούμε να μετρήσουμε τι είναι σημαντικό. Το να μετράμε λοιπόν τα αποτελέσματα είναι πραγματικά σημαντικό. Ορισμένες φορές μετράμε πράγματα τα οποία δεν χρησιμεύουμε και ίσως δεν θα τα μετράμε, δεν είναι τόσο σημαντικά. Νομίζω ότι θα σταματήσω εδώ. Ελπίζω να σας έδωσα έμπνευση να μας αναζητήσετε. Ξέρετε πού είμαστε. Είμαστε στην Αθήνα και προσβλέπουμε να συνεργαστούμε με εσάς που είστε παράδοντος στο συνέδριο. Συγχαρητήρια για την πρωτοβουλία και ευχαριστώ που μας δώσατε αυτήν την ευκαιρία. Καλό απόγευμα. We warmly thank you. Well, universal coverage of the population with qualitative care is the goal and it is a very happy conjunction to have the quality office of uh, uh, WHO established in Athens. Let us give the floor to Evangelos Mariolis, who is head of the health center from Mani, and he'll speak from there. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. I should like to thank the organizing committee, and it's a particular honor for me to be amongst you, even virtually, between two brilliant academicians and, of course, the Secretary General for Primary Healthcare, Mr. Themistoclaus. I will be very brief because the SG did raise all the technocratic issues and about the reform. I don't really like the title of the table because I believe that what happens now having this um, private uh, doctor institution being implemented is not an upgrade, it's a reform of uh, health, primary health care. But the health services market in our country is not a uniform one on the one hand. And the use of health services is determined as of now and it's defined by free choice. Consequently, 
Same as the value of health services cannot be defined by the choices of the ministry. So in this reform, we need to find and to see all the uh, pressure that is under, in its classical form, the healthcare services on the basis of um, the international knowledge and experience. To create a profile for the patient, and particularly for our country, demographic aging. And of course, the expression of the consumer's preferences. If we keep those things in mind, we will see that this reform had to have happened a great number of years ago. On the other hand, there is competition in the health services in its ensemble that create, can create uns, uh, distortions and adverse events. Be that as it may, the three key axes at the levels of care with um, uh, the um, uh, system um, having as its core the reform of the primary health care. The axes are three on the basis of international experience. The merging of hospital to see how primary health care will be in Greece. The development of alternative structures of uh, supplying and offering secondary and tertiary health care. And of course, uh, the enhancement and reform of the tertiary, of the primary health care. Now, having in mind the pandemic crisis that showcased the gaps and the lackings that are um, underlined when we don't have primary health care, but also the opportunities that arose as a result of the pandemic. So, being today a personal doctor to someone, it's uh, a good thing. It's a very good thing for me to be with you and to discuss these things, because this is something that we've been doing for the past 25 years. But we did it in a fragmented way. We each did it as we thought, as we could, despite the fact that um, 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 now we have 80% of all of covered um, um, positions in um, um, uh, private doctors. It's something that we do here. So we need a change of culture, a change of education. Ongoing education of personal doctors will play the determining role for the success of this endeavor. Because being a family doctor, or being a personal doctor rather, is at the same time a responsibility and a privilege. I don't think that anyone can feel as beautifully as being appointed as such and exercising um, your duties and dispensing your duties this way. Of course, there are various uh, opportunities to see these things in a modern um, health system as a wide um, societal um, subject. So education will change the culture of healthcare users and healthcare professionals. It's very important, Mr. Secretary General, what you mentioned, uh, that um, it's the citizens, without knowing exactly the services they will be receiving, have embraced this effort. And I believe that this will continue to a greater extent with a key requirement for the success of this vision, I would call it, of uh, uh, universal coverage, will be uh, the adequate and constant funding. There are four axes that are challenges for primary health care or out of hospital. is the improvement, which you very well said, within the legislation for the at-home care, incorporating technology that will play a determining role, the provision of counselling, which is um, raising awareness of the population in health-related issues, and this law ensures the access of high-risk risk groups, the vulnerable social groups, to health care. Why? Because we will see very fast, in the fastest two years, what we can see in what we call integrated health care, which will come through the management of chronic diseases. Because in our country, we do not have this pathway of citizens' access to the health system. That is, the first contact, but also what happens afterwards, the subsequent stages. So there is a deficit in access and subsequently in the interlink and the coordination. These are the key deficits which this reform attempt will allow us to resolve and to see from a different perspective. The education to be offered not only to personal doctors but also to all other healthcare professionals is indeed an advantage, be that in the management 
of chronic diseases, guidance of patients within this healthcare system that we all know very well. Will we be able to all implement what is called pre-symptomatic monitoring and pre-symptomatic screening? Monitoring, evaluation and assessment of the models on the promotion and prevention of health. We will see what happens with patients in other specialties and at the other levels of care or treatment, both in diagnostic tests as well as in preventive tests like the pre-symptomatic screening I mentioned. Through the personal health file, the health record rather is a big endeavor. It started with uh, very good prospects. We will see through there the quality of the health care we offer. We will be able at some point, it's not something you said, um, uh, Mr. SG, to utilize those, to actually to assess rather and evaluate the personal doctors as to the services they offer. So we'll need to see the point of referral, the point of interconnection and everything. But this will come from the investment that is described in the law. I will say this time and again for the education we all need. <coughs> not just within the national health system but also to the private doctors. It doesn't have to do with the management of chronic diseases only. It has to do with uh, community health intervention, with handling risk factors, behavior and all this and implementation of all control um, things like bioethics with a philosophy of integrated care. And of course what do we need is full digitalization of transactions in um, making taking decisions both at the management um, um, level and the actual level focusing on transparency through keeping and maintaining and disposing of the data we have this is not um, this is what we need in healthcare and especially primary healthcare to see to face uh, the uh, dilemma whether we want something that is divided or something that is big, universal, even pluralist, public, private and social healthcare system. Uh, moderator is kindly um, asking Mr. Mariolis to uh, finish. So we're talking for free, continuous, coordinated, integrated care with uh, the family at the epicenter and uh, the family as a whole. I thank you very much and I apologize if I exceeded my time. Right, fine. Let's move on uh, to our professor, the only professor of general practice at the moment, Professor Christos Leonis. Thank you. Many thanks to the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Secretary General, dear colleagues. Let's see the slides and allow me to handle the course. It is true that we are at an era of great challenges that allow me to speak uh, only uh, wearing the hat of a professor, trying to focus not only on what has not been discussed today, but mainly what the challenges are. And allow me to uh, start with a six-minute uh, uh, journey, starting from the need on uh, agreeing on certain definitions. I'm afraid that both the political and scientific discussions uh, is not based on the same platform. So we speak on primary care on, and not uh, the primary health care. This is uh, global. We speak uh, of a whole, don't speak of primary health care our primary care. There's a great discussion on the primary uh, doctor, the general doctor, and not on the services that this doctor should offer, but should be respective to the needs of the Greek population. So quite often we spend time and effort and concern while not having agreed on uh, basic notions and concepts. Even at the global scale, the contract uh, that should uh, uh, bind the primary care 
physician is a subject of discussion. It hasn't been discussed here either. And this is an issue for Greek uh, universities that have not contributed to this kind of uh, agreement on terms, concepts, and notions. Our country, beyond these important things that the Secretary General said, has not the infrastructure to assess uh, the uh, health needs of the Greek population. And we also wonder in the University of Crete, how can you build a rational health care uh, system when you haven't got uh, the databases so as to assess the needs of health of the general population? I'll, I'll go through this discussion because it is true that the present, the, the, the past, should not be discussed uh, in abstracto. Plato and Aristotle managed it very appositely to bring the discussion of the past into today. A lot of discussions have been made, and we only wonder what is lacking. A lot has been said that there is a lack of orientation towards the family, that quite often we also see only see the visitor as client and not as an integrated personality. Quite often we forget the family and we haven't met, as we should, the persons that are in vulnerable groups, but only lately, on the occasion either of the vaccination or and the pandemic. So allow me here to say that I very seldom speak solely for the physician. Through this uh, uh, diagram, allow me to dub it the vision. It is true that Greece, and this is the contribution of universities, it's by default that universities are consultants and advisors and allies of each administration. The university, however, must have high vision because without the contribution of the university, nothing can move ahead and politics cannot go ahead. So allow me to say how we imagine, how envision through the University of Crete, the future personal doctor, the one that you now uh, create, is introduce the institution and what we have over the next years. This, uh, how long it will take, depends on many things. He must learn how to communicate effectively with the patient and the f family. If he doesn't know how, he doesn't. He must have empathy and compassion. This is something more. One approaching the patient and the family. When we haven't taught how to approach the family or how we'll make a family consultancy, he must learn to assess risk both on modern tools but also communicate that and explain the risk and bring uh, the client, the patient himself and the family to understand this risk and make joint decisions. He must be able to lead the visitor, this is how we call the patient, is a person, as the Secretary General said. It's not a patient, let us go away from this term, is a visitor. And the World Health Organization also stresses focusing on the person. This is what we should say. So he must learn to change his attitude. And at this point, it doesn't happen. He must be able to teach him to use the information towards self-care. He must be using diagnostic technology, technology that must reach the personal doctor, official, accessible, affordable, and relative to the needs of the population. He must have knowledge on managing chronic diseases, and especially what we saw now in the pandemic, and has not been discussed in the broad discussion taking place on mortality and morbidity due to COVID. That is the low operability that Greek has, who is uh, immobilized at home without the necessary support. He must uh, also know and cooperate with the other structures, and not solely with the open care structures, but also those of closed uh, care. And finally, he must learn to self-assess himself. I realize, Secretary General, we have quite a frequent discussion with you. It's an honor. But allow us, he, us in the university to have this vision because you have and promote it in a very technocratic way, which means that we hope that uh, the personal doctor, through his involvement with the person, will be indeed able to eventually change the culture of the person. Therefore, contribute in assessing 
the needs. It's so, so, so important using the file or the patient himself. I would say that the big challenges today, the future that is, we should be led to the retraining. Retraining must be done today and must regard all of us. Either we are in the academia or personal doctors or in the private or public sector. We must dare to say that we need vis-a-vis -vis retraining vis-a-vis -vis the Greek citizen, including myself. This retraining will be using funds from the Ministry of Health, but it must be pursued. And Secretary General, I know your love for, please go ahead along with the Minister in developing a center of information dissemination and support of the personal doctor, something similar as the York University has. You must discuss those services, how we can broaden them so as to reach what Mr. Moyoli said, that is the integrated care, the issues of palliative care, not at the end of life, but care for maintaining a personal dignity. All this is very important. And of course, the issue of assessment. Here and now, an assessment issue. You said it. We need some indices that have been agreed upon that should be registered on the agreement and have an assessment on that. And last but not least, the University of Crete that has managed to have a digitalized platform, whenever it has used the European programs, has transformed them indeed to digital training with the assistance of patients, professionals, and the professional doctors, family doctors. We hope that this small help in cooperation with all universities and faculties of medicine will help this major project. Thank you. Right, thank you so very much. And let's move on straight to Professor Bumbas. Uh, Professor Bumbas is Professor of Pathology. He is President of the Central Board of Health, the KSE. It's important to see what a Professor of Pathology Rheumatology has to say. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, President and the AMCHAM for the capability uh, to the, the possibility to be with you I have uh, the privilege of being the last to speak and I have a very easy task to do because most of the things I wanted to say have already been said first slide please second slide if you please so the central board of health provides guidance and I will say a few things and I will say what primary health care is and what it isn't for the KC. Now since primary health care is a challenge for all countries in the world, I will share my experience from the United States of America where I spent um, some 20 years during my education and why will I do this? Well because it's a country that um, um, one cannot say that they don't have sufficient primary health care. Here we must uh, point out that I was uh, enthusiastic not just from the humility but also from the honesty of the SG. And finally, my last slide will have to do with thoughts and initial suggestions uh, from the viewpoint of the KC. I would once again like to say that the KC knows to listen more and talk less. Now, for the KC, primary health care is the first contact for this uh, individualized um, um, health care for all people in the community. And the other important thing for the KC is that we need to have functional and operational interconnection with uh, the remaining um, system, with the hospitals and... Um, The next slide. Now, what happens in North America and primarily the United States, because Canada, as you know, has a different system. 
This is a very important book that comes from the National Academy of Sciences of the United States and it was published in 2021, including the COVID epidemic. Next slide. I will just cherry pick a couple of things that I feel are important for our debate. What do we define as primary health care in the United States? It is integrated um, holistic care for the community and the other important thing. And of course, the personal doctor is the first step forward, but everyone agrees that um, a, an interdisciplinary approach is required, not just the physicians. There needs to be a close relationship between the patients, the community, and the healthcare pro um, um, professionals, and recognitions, um, recognition of its importance and support of the society. It's something Mr. Mariolis has been saying for a number of years, and it's very important that the Americans stress this greatly. Next slide, please. Next slide. Now, why do the Americans feel like it's worth um, um, dealing with primary health care because they recognize that it's the foundation. It's an investment that has secured its ROI. So there is a lot of data that say that you get your value for money. Its lack, as was already discussed, leads inescapably to um, chronicity and increased uh, expenditure and good primary health care is linked to better health. Now what struck me as old, or odd is this C CDC report that says 6 out of 10 Americans have problems in accessing primary health care. And this has to do with access, transport, support from the family, prescription, appointments re um, resulting in reduced compliance. Next slide. Some of the particularities recognized by the North Americans is that these services have to do with the community. Once again, they stress the interdisciplinary care, doctors, uh, visitors, nurses, pharmacists, social workers, etc., and the importance of technology and the access to data to protect their time and coordinate their actions. However, and this is a point I would like to share a concern of mine regarding e-services. In the States, the doctors need approximately six hours per day to document their care in the personal health record, which leaves much less time for the patients themselves. I'm, I'll explain why I'm referring I'm mentioning this and what a possible solution could be. Now, the key proposal of the National Academy is to ensure high quality of services, access to all members of the community. Another thing that is important for a country like the States, it's important for them to discuss, and if they discuss it, it means that they must know something, is that they want to remunerate the healthcare professionals in a different way than the doctors are being remunerated for medical services. Now, the reason for this differentiation and this strong recommendation, I believe, goes without saying. Healthcare professional teams and groups need to be trained, but where they live and work in the community. You understand why they say this, of course. And services of digital technology that facilitate the work of healthcare professionals patients and the latter's family is also very important in this proposal. Now concerning proper clinical practice in primary health care, it is once again uh, the interdisciplinary health team, care for everyone, emphasis on vulnerable populations. Now we as the KC recognize that there is a deficit in healthcare professionals. They do not recognize the extent of vulnerable populations. We have a great number of Greeks who constitute such groups and that their needs are pronounced. They are tremendous. PPPs, the collaboration, the coordination rather of uh, primary health care and mental health services, coordinations between the primary health care and long-term care. 
Another thing that goes hand in hand with what Mr. Leonis said is that academic centers, I mean universities, um, Harvard, Kopkis and the rest, need to include primary health care in their mission, aiming at encouraging um, the showcasing of leaders in terms of teaching research and primary health care services. University hospitals and large academic centers can no longer live on their ivory tower ignoring primary health care, something which is of great importance for our country as well. Next slide, please. I will not tire you any um, too much. This is how they see primary health care in the States. There is a core comprising the private um, um, doctor, a nurse and the family, but there we have social workers, we have the society in their surroundings. Next slide, please. Regarding training, they stress very much the training of students on sites where primary health care is offered, something that Mr. Leonis and Mr. Flelis are doing for a great number of years by sending, Frangoulis actually, sending the students there. It was emphasized by Mr. Leonis, emphasis on communication skills and raising awareness uh, regarding local and cross-cultural differences training on interdisciplinary primary health care. It's easy to do, it's, it's easy to say, hard to do. And well-structured educational curricula for on primary health care. I would like to conclude by talking about digital technology and what the Americans suggest. The problem is that digital technology is time-consuming, so much of these data need to be connected by non-doctors. They recognize that the existing digital systems existing at the moment are incompatible amongst themselves. There is a proposal that uh, we should uh, take into consideration that there should be a national system of data, of patients' data, that will collect information um, um, automatically from the patients, from the um, test labs, etc. Automatic collection from the patients and choice on behalf of the patients as to who will have access to their data, which will be able to be used by the patients themselves. So the patients own their data. So this is how they see integration. Doctors need not enter all the information and to have an automatic initial system that will allow the input of this information using smart medicine systems to uh, reach and draw some initial conclusions that they can share with the healthcare professionals and the patients. Next and last slide. In conclusion, on the basis of what we said and what I heard for the KESI, the doctor is the main pillar for primary healthcare, but they're not sufficient and not enough without the interdisciplinary team of the primary healthcare and support from technology. The Secretary General reminded us the forgotten yet important role of pharmacists, as was in the pandemic. There are many people who can help primary health care. It is necessary to have the participation of all doctors in the community. It can't pertain to just a few specialties, and I'm happy to see that the number of doctors participating was widened. Participation and education in the community with well-structured curricula, not just for doctors but also for nurses and social workers, and for uh, economists. Provision for incentives and ongoing training of primary healthcare doctors. Mr. Mariolis incessantly talks about that, that incentives are needed. Capabilities of uh, development and evolution for those who work there in the form of postgraduate degrees, seminars, trainings, specializations, etc. The KC is thinking about that, so we're open to recommendations from the community. Another thing that we feel is important is the enhancement of primary health care academic staff. We need new tenured professors jobs in all universities of the country with this curriculum at the same time to be able to be clinical doctors. I mean, a professor uh, of primary health care cannot teach that at the hospital. They need to be able to be doctors at the health centers. And it's something that is not done right now. And we need to facilitate the KC 
in doing this, because this is something we're trying to settle and arrange. Technological coverage of the population is important, taking into consideration the geographical particularities of the countries and interconnection of the primary health care with the rest of the NA, Greek NHS in a way that will facilitate their referral to the secondary and tertiary care in the country and vice versa. Suggesting it as a best practice, but at the same time training and facilitating training seminars. Thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you, sir for all these important things and issues raised by Mr. Bumpas. Unfortunately, we don't have any time for discussion because we have run out of time. We have exceeded our time. If you have any questions, we may take them outside, perhaps. So thank you all very much.